What is happening, Cog Squad? This is Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. The tree guys are coming to cut these trees down that need to be cut. So there's some stuff that we got to get done today. Previously on the Cog Vlog. Big changes coming up here on the farm. Now there are some obstacles in this is number one are the trees. They gotta get the trees removed and that's coming hopefully this month. And our chick brooder. These swart vanas may be rare, but they show all crazy. I'm glad, I'm glad I caught you. You would have got zapped. They are really, really good layers. I mean, what more could you ask for besides, I think they look so darn cool. know about the big changes coming to the farm we got some trees that need to be removed and so those guys are coming they said this week or next week so there's some stuff that needs to be done and the two things we're gonna try to get done today is is we're gonna try to take down a portion of our chicken coop and to try to take down and remove our chick brooder where we raise our meat chickens if we can get those two things done today it'll be totally awesome but first, let's take care of the farm. I would like to say a huge thank you to the entire Cock Hill Farm family. Most of y'all know my daughter's best friend and pet chicken, Penny, passed away uh, this past week. And just wanted to thank all of y'all for all your kind words and thoughts and prayers. We sure do appreciate that. Big boys, y'all ready to eat something? Y'all look who's already down here helping and getting started. Peaches, man, I so appreciate that you were up early this morning getting started on the projects need to be done around here, girl. What's up, Pinky? What's up, girls? Uh-oh, look here. Big Tom. What's up, Thomas? Everybody's ready for breakfast this morning. Get everybody there hey this morning what's up rod hey people have been asking about you rod rod loves hanging out in here with the girl goats ladies man ain't that right buddy all right girls it's always an adventure when you go into t and t's bachelor pad i'm not even gonna bring the camera in there i've learned my lesson like having two little kid brothers constantly fighting and playing all the time. We still supervising. I'm getting the chores done, girl. I'm getting them done. May take me a little while, but I'm getting them done. Man. <laughs> Gotta get the geese out of here. Come on, geese. That way. Come on, guys. They'll eat all the chicken feed if I leave them in there. But we put them up in there at night, so they really do an awesome job at keeping predators away, especially like coons and possums. Geese are pretty good uh, protectors of the farm. You know, you know the coyote or dog, what much they can do, but something on a smaller scale, they can board them off. Let Mary Cross chicks out this morning. Come on out, boys and girls. What's up, JP? Yeah. Got to say, let me get this camera down. Got to say good morning to JP. Oh, JP, you're looking quite lovely, sister. Yes, you are. A lot of people ask what kind of chicken JP is. She is a Bantam Polish, Polish hen. So, they're so beautiful. For the most part, these suckers are pretty docile, but JP is extremely friendly. Well, y'all, the garden, is winding on down. And I'll show you exactly what's going on with that garden when we hopefully get that coop and that brooder tore down today. Y'all remember the first rule of the Cornishes? Cut that fence off. 
they've pretty much cleared this area out. And so that's kind of what they do. They start here first because of course it's closer and they're small when they go in. And as they get larger, they clean this area out and then they start exploring on the backside. And I'll show you that over there, how they just start just clearing it all out. Cause we got them in a pretty big area. All this, they got a lot more that they're just, just eating. And it's cool to see their progression as they just start doing what chickens do. And they absolutely love being underneath this forest canopy and going up under here and they were literally just they will eat all these weeds out and of course there's a ton of bugs and insects all in here in the forest here's some tree canopies here and you can see that they have pretty much eaten all this right here it's so cool and if you follow me you know that we don't do chicken tractors here anymore and that we don't have big big pasture area and that's why we set up this portable coop system with this movable electric poultry netting and we'll take this thing down and put it in a new location and we won't use this spot for at least a year maybe longer than that i'll show you a spot that is a year old we had these guys right here about i don't know eight nine months ago but look look you can see it's all back green again you can see right over here this spot right here was their last spot and we moved it down there and we just just moved it all over the place because we just got all this wooded wooded land and we're just utilizing it the best we can we're raising forest raised meat chickens a chicken is a jungle fowl anyway so that's where they came from is the jungles so this is second nature to them and i really want people out there to know that you don't have to have just acres and acres and acres of just pure pasture land to raise meat chickens. You can do it on a setup like this or just think outside the box and maybe you can come up with a, a, a plan that works for your situation. Always remember to do the best you can with what you got. Mrs. Kaki has already got started on the uh, chicken coop taking it down while I was doing all the chores this morning and we'll get through with this and we'll go see what she's got going on. Well, you got a bunch done. A bunch of mess. <laughs> well, most of y'all probably know, if not, this is our chick brooder. This is where we start all our meat chickens at. And we've used it a million times, it seems like, and it works really, really well. But my plan is, is to put everything in one spot. I don't want a chick brooder over here and a new chicken's or egg laying chickens and Mary Carl chickens over there and you're having to go back and forth with it. They all eat feed, they all need water. If all of it's in one spot, it's just way more efficient. And what we're doing is, is we are having this huge tree right here removed. And there's another tree right over here we're having removed. That's a dead tree. This one's not dead yet. But it's got a bad disease spot in it. At any moment, it's gonna fall. At some point in time, this thing's gonna fall. I mean, look at that. It's just pure rotten. And there's no telling how much this tree weighs because it's pretty darn big. You can see it compared to me. I can't get my arms around it. So it's a monstrous tree. Now this will allow us, like I said in our video uh, last week, there's my garden right here. Once these trees are moved and this chicken coop's removed, we're going to make the garden come all the way down to somewhere right in this area. But we got to get this chick brooder moved, or out of the way at least, and get this coop torn down. Maybe rig that fence, maybe that piece there, you can and go it over there. The thing, definitely. Yeah. Well, I would like to be able to get this pole out. Yeah, we're gonna get that pole out for sure. Yeah, we're gonna get that pole out for sure. Yeah, we're gonna get that pole out for sure. That moment you realized you just messed up. <laughs> that that wasn't funny. <laughs> Don't need no tractor, girl. You got your husband with his guns.
So now you can kind of get an idea of what we're doing now is we're taking the coop down and then we're going to make it run from here to over there. Got to give them where they can come in and take this tree out and come in and take this other tree out. We may not salvage this thing. Uh, we just want to get it out of the way for now. We've been talking about it. Our first initial thought was to salvage it, but now I'm thinking that I'm just going to build one attached to the new coop and not worry about this thing because by the time we move this thing all the way over there where the raised bed garden is, it's going to be in, it's going to be in a mess and I'm going to have to repair it. The floor is not in great shape anyway, so. Can't see you now. Come on, I'll holler at you. Come on. All right, load. Up. Broke the whole wall off. Yeah, this thing's way more rusted out than I thought. It's, it's, it's just not, it's not even worth keeping. It's not salvageable. And it needs to be taller. There's some design flaws. Number one, it needs to be taller. You know, I made it out of scrap wood. There needs to be vents at the bottom. We got vents at the top like little windows, but it needs to be some type of vent system at the bottom to give them more airflow in the really hot days. It needs to be hardwired in instead of us using extension cords and power strips. And it just needs a better and hardier floor, something that I'm not going to have to replace every two or three years. So, you know, we just decided just to scrap this thing. And when we build our coop, we're going to build a brooder anyways. Sometimes you just got to cut your losses. We're making sure, I don't know if you can hear me or not, let me get over here. But we're making sure just, there's no, no snakes under it. <laughs> that may make a good Tuesday tip. I always look for snakes. Now, let's officially tear something up. The brooder is tore down, so that can only mean one thing. Everybody get up. Yes, all right. Now, as you can tell, it looks a little bit different now, but you can get the idea. You can see how that garden is gonna come to here now. Now I need to set me a T-post so we can put these panels on it and get my T-post driver and a post and we fixing to get the driving, old son. <laughs> and this is all just temporary. It's temporary until we get the new coop built and these trees gone. Now that right there, that should keep everybody at bay. Keep halfway, keep any predators out. So I think we're good until we can get the coop built. <laughs> we'll definitely come back down here tonight and make sure everybody's up because it's totally, it's totally different. It looks, it looks way different. I'm hoping that the tree guys come pretty soon and knock this out. It'd be awesome if they did. But if not, then we'll just find another piece of this puzzle, piece of this project and get it knocked out. Baby steps, a little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Hey, this was pretty big though. I'm happy about this today. They're absolutely loving the underneath where the, the uh, brooder was. How satisfying was that? Ripping it apart. Y'all stick around for the next part of this big farm project we got going on. Hey, if you're interested in any Cock Hill Farm shirts like this, Eat Local shirt, check out that link right down below. If you're new to the channel, like what you see, we would love to have you. Hit that subscribe button right over here. And as always, y'all be good.